environment is a majestic environment. Uh, Lovely because of uh, the type of all that you're going to see it with the waves, uh, the type of uh, landscape that you're going to see it, uh, that amount of uh, diversity that you can go to see despite the fact that all of them go on to belong in the, in the same sea coast of South Sahel. The environment is uh, essentially, it can be in uh, a tropical region, it can go on to be in temperate region, it can go on to be in a, a cooler environment as well. But then, by and large, the landscape that develops in those regions is going to be very, very similar. And we are talking about that is temperate regions or in tropical regions, it goes on to be very, very similar of sorts. Before we go on to look at the entire of the spectrum of landforms that is associated with the marine environment, one can go on to take a slight look at the way the whole of this landscape associated with and carved out of uh, waves say uh, go on to look like uh, and that's what we are talking about this is uh, a marine environment uh, and uh, it's one of those types of uh, environments that you can go to see it evolving and that goes on to be flourishing in the region as well that is uh, the sea waves uh, with its uh, potential sometimes rising to 20 feet 30 feet 40 feet uh, and sometimes just washing your feet as well in this case uh. And of course, it can go on to range from another angle as well. That is, it can go on to be pretty uh, peaceful as well. Very, very peaceful, like the one that you can go on to see it here. So, it has a potential to become turbulent in no amount of time at all. Both of these uh, graphics have been picked up uh, from uh, the coastal region. Marine land landforms go on to develop in the coastal region, say, and uh, that is where it goes on to make it uh, easy for us uh, and even uh, essential for us, uh, pertinent for us uh, to differentiate between what is a coast, uh, what is a shore, uh, what exactly are the different type of terminology that are going to be used with respect to that. Coming to this part, uh, as you can go on to take a look at it, one of them is going to be the coastline. This is going to be the coastline. And when we are talking about coastline, uh, we are uh, essentially going to be focusing on uh, certain areas and certain themes eh, like this place eh, where eh, it can go to be cliff, cliffy type of a situation, it can go on to be some piece of a landform. Then uh, the whole of this region that is eh, from here to here as you can go to see that going to be called as a coast which is very different from that of a shore. Shore is eh, the one area that is eh, going to be essentially very close to that of eh, the coast coast is an overall area comprising of a boat that is a, the sea affected areas as well as the land area and it's a broader area. Shore is a, the area that goes on to wash the entire of the coast and the line that goes on to define it is going to be called by the name of a shoreline. This is what exactly defines a, the shoreline that is a, the line with which a, the sea water is always going to be in contact with a, that's the shoreline. The shoreline keeps on changing between high tide and that of the low tide. And consequently, that is a, the shore that is going to be talked about is low tide shoreline or it can go on to be high tide shoreline. That is, a, the waves that go on to move towards the region, they're going to wash it, they're going to touch it. But then there are some places where the waves go on to actually break. And it is only after breaking that the, the waves go on to move forward. Now, this is a place where the waves go on to break. That is a, a breaker line in this case here. and of course beneath it there are going to be a lot of uh, landforms which you'll go on to come to know about it. For example, the wave cut bench that is going to be a part of it uh, and uh, also some of uh, those features that are going to be associated with, uh, with the formation of it that is going to be called as a notch, wave cut clip as well. So, coast is a broader area. That's one part. Shore is uh, one of those areas uh, and the shoreline is that area where the sea water is constantly in touch with uh, the whole of uh, the coast uh, and it's a line along which it goes on to be in contact with it. Uh, that is what we are going to be calling it by the name of a shore line. The shore line uh, can go on to be at high tide, it can go on to be at a low tide as well. Most of these marine landforms go on to take place or evolve at the coast. It is in the coastal regions that these landforms evolve. 
and consequently the marine landforms in the marine topography is also going to be called by the name of a coastal topography that is the name that is going to be given to it having talked about it we come on to understand certain situations in this case that is uh, the whole of this area that we are going to be talking about that is an area that is uh, going to be affected by that of waves uh, waves are going to be the most important agents these waves uh, go on to break near to the coast uh, and when we are going to be talking about where they are going to break near to the coast uh, essentially we are going to be talking about that of the breakers and this is the place uh, where uh, the waves go on to have a farm and then they go on to while in the course of movement towards the coast, they go on to break, they go on to rupture, and that is how exactly the waves start moving towards this region. Now, in the course of this movement, waves go on to break in a variety of ways. Now, this is a, something that is to be read and understood in oceanography in a separate chapter that is going to be called by the name of waves itself. But then, these waves they go on to be having some type of an oscillatory movement and depending upon uh, the uh, way the waves are going to be generated. Uh, tsunami is also going to be one of these waves. Uh, winds also going to generate some of these type of waves, uh, different type of waves. Uh. Now, these waves, uh, as they keep on moving towards the coast, uh, they go going to keep on changing it. Uh, and it is only when they are going to be coming near to the coast that they are going to break. And that is where they are going to be breaking. It is only in the course of uh, this breaking uh, that uh, the waves, uh, as you are going to take a look at it, they are going to be moving. And as these waves are going to break, uh, in the process of their movement, they go on to carve out different types of topographic features here. It is these type of topographic features that are part of our chapter called as a marine landforms. Now, from the shallow water zone, these waves go on to move from a deep water to that of a shallow water. It is only in the course of moving from deep water to the shallow water that the waves are always going to be showing a breaking tendency here. And as they go on to break in this case, eh, as we talked about, eh, this type of a breakage eh, is eh, always going to be accomplished eh, with the release of so much amount of energy. So waves, when they go to move from eh, away from the coast eh, to near to the coast, eh, they go on to change their course, they go on to become parallel to the coast, of course, because of a variety of factors. Eh, but then these are some of the things that you go to read and understand in a separate chapter called as waves. Eh. So that is how exactly the movement of these waves is going to take place eh, towards the whole of the region. And it is these waves, that is the coastal topography or the coastal landforms are going to be created eh, by the action of waves, by the action of tides and by the action of currents, all three of them. But the most important eh, component in this case is going to be that of the waves. Waves go on to present eh, the most important component associated with the formation of a coastal <coughs> topography. Now, near to the coastal topography, the features that are going to be developed, they are going to be of many types. These are going to be associated with a certain type of a processes. For example, the processes in this case will to include, one of them is going to be called by the name of hydraulic action. Third is solution, and the fourth is, of course, attrition. Four of them. Now, hydraulic action is going to be different. The meaning of hydraulic action is that in uh, the coastal environment, uh, when the waves go on to move, what they go on to do in the course of movement is, uh, as they go on to move, they go on to compress uh, some of the air in the crevices in any type of a hole. If there are going to be certain type of joints in the rocks, uh, if there are going to be certain type of uh, holes in the rock, uh, then these holes uh, or joints uh, or these cracks uh, go on to get their air compressed completely inside it. And once that is going to be compressed, uh, the compression of this air is accomplished by its release thereafter. And once this is going to be released thereafter, that means uh, when exactly is it going to be released? It will be released in due course of a time. So 
the air goes on to get compressed and as the waves retreat, the air expands and sometimes explodes uh, violently. It is this process that is responsible for the breaking of the rocks uh, near to the coast. Uh, that is factor number one, hydraulic action. That is the compression of uh, the air and subsequent expansion. Compression, subsequent expansion, compression, subsequent expansion and that is how that is how these things are going to be accomplished. That's factor number one, hydraulic action. Second is abrasion. Now, when the waves say, have collided with the coastal regions, say, what the waves go on to do is that they go on to break the rocks apart. Now, when the rocks have been broken, the fragments derived out of these broken fragments, say, broken rocks, say, they go on to get themselves incorporated. Let me repeat it, they go on to get themselves uh, incorporated into the water into the sea water and when they have been incorporated into the sea water the incorporation of all of these things say, into the sea water gives the sea water some amount of a tool that is a uh, some degree of a tool uh, for the purpose uh, of uh, upgrading the surface that means these are the tools uh, with which uh, the sea is able to work it out uh, abrasion is uh, going to be the name that is going to be given to it uh, that is a uh, the materials derived, the fragments derived, eh, that goes on to be acting as a tool for the waves eh, and the waves are able to break them apart. That's the second one. Solution in this case goes on to comprise of a eh, simple dissolving action of water. Of course, water is going to be one of the best known solvents eh, and eh, the solvent action can go on to be with the rocks. Eh, it can go to dissolve some of the materials from it. It can go on to make it weaker as well. And as it goes on to make it weaker, in the process of making it weaker, the rocks in due course of time go on to break apart. The last of them is going to be called by the name of attrition. Now, attrition is a, a process of the wear and tear of the rocks as they go on to collide with each other. That means the bigger particles are going to become smaller, the smaller particles are going to become even smaller. So all of these fragments that are going to be derived, these fragments that are going to be derived, they will go on to become weaker, weaker and smaller and smaller in due course of time. So this is how exactly the waves are responsible for creating certain type of topographic feature here. The topographic feature that is going to be developed in uh, the coastal regions uh, that goes on to follow at least three different type processes and three different sequence of landform development as well. Now that goes on to begin with uh, all of these sequences going to begin with uh, First is going to be, one of them is going to be notch. Second is cave. Third is cliff. The fourth is wave cut platform. Second sequence in this case we are going to comprise with it. One of these is going to be called as headland, notch, cave, stab, stump. And there is a third sequence that goes on to develop, that goes on to comprise of one of them is going to be. Cave and then blowhole. Now, this is the sequence. So, there are three different types of landforms that go on to evolve in these regions. We can go on to pick up some of these animations relevant to the betterment of your concepts. Now, that is one of these diagrams that goes on to show what exactly it's an animation that goes on to show what exactly is going to be in the coastal areas. You can go to see some of these are going to be small holes here and there. And as the waves go to collide with it, in the course of collision, what it goes on to do is that in these holes, in these crevices, it goes on to compress the air. And as the air has been compressed, the air has been compressed, and then the moment the wave retreats, it goes on to explode violently out of it. And in the course of it, all of these areas are the ones that are going to be compressed with the waves. And then as the waves go to collide, they're going to compress it. And when they're going to retreat back, then in the process of this retreat, they go to collide. 
And as they're going to collide, they go to break it, and these are going to be the fragments that are ultimately derived of it. Now, these are the fragments that go on to become a tool for the waves to cause abrasion. So, the first was hydraulic action, the second was going to be abrasion, the third was solution. Of course, for solution doesn't require any animation of sorts in this case. Eh? And eh, the last, of course, is eh, what we're going to be talking about. Eh, is uh, going to be associated with uh, the last part uh, is uh, associated with attrition that is the size of the particles becoming smaller and uh, smaller taking another look at it uh, as you can go on to find it out that is uh, all of these materials that have been broken apart in the coastal areas uh, as you can go to see it here as well that is uh, what happens in this case is uh, these are the small type of notches that go to develop uh, and uh, as the waves go to collide with it in the process of its collision that goes on to break the whole of the rocks apart that's the process that goes to take place the entire of these rocks go to fall apart and when they go to fall apart that is when they go to become a tool by the waves uh, to cut it uh, even deeper as well so Beginning with one of them. This is a, how exactly a typical coastal region goes on to be looking like it, with a good amount of a, a protrusion that goes on to be taking place out into the sea also. This is a, one type of a picture that you can go to find mostly in temperate regions. Eh? And some of those regions that go on to be protruding out into open in this case, eh? as you can go to find it out, eh? that is, most of them are going to be associated with. For example, this one is going to be associated with the eh? What we're going to be calling it as a star. All of these features, they of course going to become different. These are the features that we're going to be calling it by the name of a headland. That is the name that is going to be given to it. That is going to be headland. And that is uh, what we're going to be calling it by the name of a, a star. That's the name that is going to be given. The first place from where we can go to begin with it is going to be in any coastal region that goes on to be having this type of a profile as you can go to take a look at it. The first thing that develops in these areas is going to be a notch. This is going to be a notch, development of a notch here. Now this notch goes on to get self deepened. Notch is nothing yet but a, a, a small hole that has been enlarged. So this notch keeps on getting itself enlarged and enlarged and it keeps on getting itself enlarged. As it goes on to get self enlarged, what happens is uh, it allows the upper portion to become supportless and as the upper portion goes on to become supportless it goes on to collapse now we're going to show you with the help of a, a diagram in this case uh, assuming that this is going to be a coastline of sorts this is the way the waves are going to be colliding with the surface now that's the place where a notch of this type goes on to develop that is a notch that is developed in the region. That's the type of a notch that is developed in the region. Now, in due course of a time, this notch will go on to get itself enlarged. It will go on to get itself enlarged. Now, when it has got itself enlarged further, that means, uh, let's say this is how exactly that it has enlarged, uh, then the whole of this region will go on to become supportless. And as it goes on to become supportless, uh, there is the whole of this region will go on to, there is the entire region will go on to fall. And as it goes on to fall, the coastline will go on to get itself reshaped. So a cove will go on to pave the way for formation of a cave. This is going to be notch, a small hole that has taken place that was going to be called by the name of a notch. Now this notch goes on to develop itself in the form of a cave. Now as the cave goes on to develop, the whole portion goes on to become supported, it goes on to collapse. And as it goes on to become it collapse, it goes on to lead to formation of a cave. Cliff. This is this was the picture that you go on to saw in the initial part. That was a picture. That is a cliff. It's a cliffy type of a coastline in this region. All of those are going to be straight cliffs. You can, can you imagine the height of it that can go on to be as high as a something like some 50 meters, 60 meters of sorts in this case. And coming to the picture of it, this this picture a notch goes on to get self enlarged and as it goes on to get enlarged, the coastline that was going to be here, that goes on to migrate, migrate backward. It starts migrating backward. So a due course of time, this will be a place where notch will be developed. And then, then the whole thing will go on to get repeated here as well. And then the notch will go on to develop here as well. And the entire thing will be repeated here as well. And then it will go on to move backward. 
And as it goes on to move backward, it leaves behind what we're going to be calling it as a wave cut back from. So it leads to the development of four features. First is notch, second is cave, third is cliff, and the fourth is wave cut platform. You can go to take a look at this diagram itself. Some time back in this region, that is where the coastline used to be. This is where the coastline has used to be. Now it has got itself receded back. It has got itself receded back. And the whole of the place where it has receded back, it has left in the front of it what we're going to be calling it is a wave cut platform. That is the name that is going to be given to it, wave cut platform in this case here. These are going to be cliffs. And uh, of course, all of these features that you're going to take a look at, this is, a, a, this is one of these features that we're going to be calling it by the name of a cave. It is going to be also called as a, as a natural bridge as well. That's also going to be called as, this is going to be called by the name of a stack. And the feature is going to be composite in this place, coming to it, coming to it. Uh, that's a, a normal feature that you're going to find developing in the coastal area. So what you're going to find here is, I mean, if you can go to name it out, the first is, a, in, the, in this case, that is the first is stack. This is going to be called by the name of a arc. That is going to be called by the name of a beach. The whole of the these regions are going to be called by the name of a cliff. And the protrusions that you're going to be taking place, these are protrusions, they are going to be called by the name of headlines. So it takes place associated with a headline. This, this is how the features go to develop. And the process of the formation goes on to be different. As you can go to take a look at it in this case, what you go to observe is that the whole of this region was almost like that. This is how this region used to be. That was the coastline. That used to be the coastline. And what happened was that there is a, you can go to find, this is a small place that we're going to be calling is a notch. Now, this notch enlarged itself into the form of a sea cave. After some time, the sea cave will, as you will go to uh, observe it, that is, sea cave will go to collapse. It will go to collapse. And as it goes into collapse, the cliff will go to retreat backward. The retreat of this cliff backward is what goes on to lead to the formation of a wave cut platform here. The whole of this region is going to be a wave cut platform. Now, the notch used to be here. And then this notch led to the development of a sea cave. And the sea cave ultimately gave development to the arc. And the arc, when it, then when this arc collapsed, it gave to uh, development of a stack. And uh, when this stack uh, was eroded further, it gave to the gave rise to the development of uh, another feature that we're going to be calling here it as a, a stump. A stump is uh, just uh, at the high tide level, while uh, while stack goes into emerging much more higher in this case. Uh. So. That is uh, one picture that you can go to find it. This is a uh, somewhat 3D type of a picture that you can go to observe in this region. As you can go to take a look at it, the entire of this region is going to be a wave cut platform, the whole of this region. That is going to be the stack and stump in this case. This is going to be stack, this is stump because it is a, just below and near to the high tide level. This is stump, this stack. It. This is where you're going to be finding a wave cut notch. That is a notch. This is a portion that we're going to be calling it as a notch. And uh, you're going to take a look at it uh, now. That is an arc. This is an arc. An arc is almost like that of a bridge. It's like uh, the two pillars have been made and then you're going to be having a slab over it. That is how exactly the arc's going to be looking like in this case. Uh, and uh, that is a cliff. This is going to be a cliff all in all in this place. And you're going to find a, a good amount of a sea caves also in the same region. These sea caves are going to be there. This is the place where the sea caves are going to be. That's the place. Here. The whole of this region is going to be made of a sea caves here. That is a that is the feature associated with it. And what will going to happen here is where sea caves are going to be. 
Now, all of these places where the sea caves are going to be, you will go to observe that uh, ultimately the entire of this feature from the top will go to collapse. This is a place that is going to collapse. Uh, and uh, the cliff that is going to be here, this cliff will go to again migrate backward. It will go to migrate backward. So the cliff that used to be here, somewhere here, the whole of this cliff that used to be here, from here it has migrated backward and in the process of its migration, it has left uh, what we are going to be calling it as a wave cut platform here. Now, these are the type of features that go to develop uh, near to what we are going to be calling it as a headland. Now, these are the areas that we are going to be calling it by the name of a headland. So, it is headland that goes on to become the site of attack by the waves. This is uh, what we are going to be calling it by the name of a wave. That is going to be called by the name of a headland. So, headland is one, the bay is going to be another one. Both of these features are going to be different in this case. And you can go to take another look at it in this case. So, the look in this case is going to be completely made of something different. The one protrusion that you're going to see it here, one protrusion that you're going to see it here, that is a made of hard rocks. It's made of a hard rocks, hard resistant rocks. They are going to be resistant rocks. And they are made when the in, in the sea region, the whole of this region is made of, the entire of this region is made of hard rocks. And uh, this is going to be made of uh, hard rocks. This is going to be made of hard rocks. Here, in between it is going to be soft. So when hard and soft, hard and soft rocks are going to be arranged uh, on the coastal region, uh, that is uh, the soft rocks are going to be getting eroded, while the hard rocks do not want to get themselves eroded. And that leads to the formation of what we are going to be calling it as a core. It's like, if you can uh, uh, understand it, uh, if there is a coastline uh, where uh, hard and soft rocks go on to lie alternately, hard rocks and soft rocks. Uh, it's hard, that is going to be hard and that's going to be soft. So hard and uh, soft rocks going to lie alternately. And because the hard and the soft rocks are going to lie alternately, what you're going to observe is these type of features that you're going to develop in this region. That is, this is going to be hard. That's going to be hard. So hard rocks are going to protrude forward, and the hard rocks are going to be it will it will go to lead to development of a core. That's one. And these are the areas that will be called by the name of a headland. It is in these headlands eh, that eh, first a notch develops, the notch goes into enlarge in the form of a cave, eh, and eh, the cave will go on to lead to formation of an eh, arc. The arc will go to collapse to lead to formation of a stack, and the stack will go to further fall down to lead to the development of a stumper. Now, taking a look at it. This is how exactly the process goes on. As you can go to find it, uh, that is, this is in the form of a plant, that is the headland, uh, this is the headland, uh, and this headland has been attacked from all the directions, all the directions. Uh, and uh, as you can go to find it once again in this case, uh, now, as since it has been attacked uh, by the waves uh, from different angles, uh, this is a headland, this is a headland, this is a core, that's a headland, and that is a core. It has been attacked by the waves from all the sides. So what it goes to lead to development of this? Uh, this is a small cave. There is going to be there are going to be two caves here. Uh, that's a bay or a core. Now these caves are going to get themselves and last to lead to development of an arc. Uh. Now the difference between cave and arc is that uh, cave is going to be on one side of the wall. When uh, when there is going to be another wall that goes that goes when there is going to be another cave that develops on another side of the wall, and both of them are going to join together, that is when it goes on to lead to development of an arc. So an arc develops in this case. This is how the arc develops. The cave will not go on to have an arc largely because it's not possible that the cave develops on that side as well and both of them will go to create a hole all the way through the through this headland. So all in all first is in this case as you're going to find it first is going to be the formation of a headland that is going to be one that's going to be headland that's number one. Then in the headland, there will be formation of a notch. Notch will go to lead to development of a cave. Cave will go to lead to formation of an arc. Arc will go on to, in due course of time, this portion of arc will go to collapse. 
as it goes into collapse, it will go to lead to formation of a stack. And of course, there are going to be some more arcs that are going to be in the process of their development. So that's a three-day diagram, and then a plan development goes on to be here. That is a headland protruding, and as you can go to find it on both the sides of it here, as well on this side, there is the waves going to attack. And while it goes on to attack, it leads to development of a cave. These caves join together to lead to formation of this arc, and this arc goes on to collapse to lead to formation of a Stack. That is the color diagram associated with it, uh, comprising of uh, what we are going to be calling it uh, as a, uh, that is going to be arc, uh, this is going to be stack, uh, and uh, that is going to be a cliffy headland, the whole of the region is going to be a cliffy headland in this case. Uh. Now you can go on to take a look at it uh, from an angle of uh, an animation. This is an animated photography that will go on to give you an idea how is it that in a coastline, uh, a cave that is not is developing. This knot will go on to lead to development of a cave. See, these uh, caves are going to be intruding uh, from one side to another side. So, cave uh, that is an arc has developed in this case. Uh, the arc will go to collapse now. The whole of this region now goes on to collapse. As it collapses, it will go to lead to development of a stack. So, now you're going to find a cliff, then a stack is going to be there, and the stack goes on to collapse further to lead to formation of a stump. Now that is an animated version of the formation of a from the headland, headland, notch, cave, arc, stack, and then stump. There's another animation that you can go to take a look at that will go to give a better picture in this case. That is a as you can go to find it, these are the areas where the waves have started attacking it. Now these are the areas where the waves, and as you can go to find it, that is a, a case joined together and an arc has developed. This arc in due course of time will go to collapse. It is going to collapse in no time now. So as the waves continue their attack, this is collapsed. And once it has collapsed, it has led to formation of a stack. This stack goes on to get eroded further. And once it goes on to get eroded further, it will go to lead to formation of a stump. That is the process. Now can you imagine this process goes on to take something like millions of years of time. It is not accomplished only in a a small amount of time, maybe lakhs of years or millions of years for this process to develop in this region. Minimum of 10,000, 15,000 years of time it goes into it taking place. For example, you may have known about some of these components. And when we're going to be talking about this example that is about Ram Setu, that is one part that goes into be connecting the whole of the region from India to Sri Lanka at that point of a time. Now, that, there used to be a bridge that is existing. Of course, the historians have distorted it uh, and with number of people, then almost not one, not two, not three, not four, uh, not hundred, not thousands, millions of evidences now going to show that part. Uh, and uh, that is the entire region got itself eroded in due course of our time. And of course, that is what paved the way for all of those uh, so-called serious secularists uh, to that there was nothing that feature of this type existed. But once you want to come to know about this archaeology, you will come to know about it in a better manner. So that has been the case. You can go to take another look at it, that is how all that is it is going to be developing itself. And uh, this is one of those places that is uh, the headland is now in this case is going to be subject to attack. This headland uh, leads to the development of a stack and then itself leads to the development of an arc and a stand, a stamp all in all. You can go to take a look at it once again in this case that is beginning from here. That is as the waves going to, uh, to move the whole of this headland goes on to get attacked and that leads to the development of an arc and then of course from arc to stack and then a, a main coastline that is going to be here. This is the way that it, the movement uh, and uh, the features formation going to take place uh, and the cliffs keep on retreating back. back uh. You can go to find it out uh, how is it that the feature must have looked like uh, sometime back. Uh, that is uh, playing it once again in this case. Uh, see this is what, how the feature has been and the whole thing has moved backward, completely backward uh, with the help of a cliff retreat. Uh. So that was the second feature, that was the second sequence. Uh, the third sequence is going to be associated with the formation of a blue hole. As we talked about it some time back, that is uh, the sequence now goes on to be comprising of uh, one is a uh, first is going to be formation of a notch. This is the place where a notch will go to develop. This notch will go to allow the development of a cave. 
Now this K, this uh, this K will go to become larger, and along this joint, along this joint, the whole of this region will go to get itself excavated. The entire region will go to get itself excavated. So in case if there is going to be a joint, which was in this case, that is how the joint was. Yeah. So the kids going to get to themselves and large around this point of weakness and they keep on excavating it, excavating it. And they lead to the development of this hole of the cave, pointing it out upwards. And as they're going to move upwards and as they're going to point it out upwards, in that process, they're going to lead to creation of a small hole onto the surface. It is this hole that is called as a blower. And that's how it goes on develop. That is it. That's where the notch has been. That is where the uh, first the notch has been. The notch develop itself uh, into a cave. The whole of this region, uh, you, the notch develop itself into the form of a cave. As you can go to take a look at it, this notch develop itself into a cave, and the, and the cave goes uh, uh, went on to give way to the development of a blowhole. After some time, the blowhole will go on to collapse and it will go to lead to development of an inlet. This inlet is going to be called by another name that is going to be called as geo. That is the name. Geo is also going to be called as glow. Now, because it is going to be such type of a deep inlet, some time back, uh, the Irish people used to hide uh, all of uh, their uh, vessels, uh, ships and other things into these regions uh, in this glow. All of those Irish people used to be hiding these uh, in uh, these regions itself. Uh. Now you can go to take a uh, look at it uh, in an animated form as well. The animated version of it that is going to be here. And that is going to only give you an idea. It's only an idea that how is it that uh, the blowholes going to look like. Because uh, most of these blowholes uh, are difficult to imagine. But this is uh, something like a very jocular uh, type of a form that is the blowholes going on to be almost all, all like it that a good amount of an air comes out from this region. People go on to be experiencing this type of having an experience of this region near to the blowhole. So good amount of an air comes out as the waves going to compress it at this place. And a good number of advertisements go on to be taking place also around the same region as well. So these are the three features associated with it. Three sequence of features. And we can go to talk about it once again this sequence of features uh, the sequence was one was comprising of notch then cave then cliff and wave cut platform second was that was comprising of uh, the first was a uh, headland into hard rocks, go or bay in soft rocks, notch that is going to be the primary part of it, that notch goes on to enlarge itself into a cave, cave goes on to lead to formation of an arc, arc leads to formation of a stump, stump leads to the formation of a, it leads to the formation of a stack, arc leads to formation of a stack and the stack to the stump. And the last part has been uh, the reserve one is one again, notch, then cave, then geo, and then an inlet. What we're going to be calling it by the name of glow in this case. That is the sequencing of the features that go on to be formed by the process of erosion. Deposition in this case takes place. Uh, you have wave cut platform, that is a cut platform, that is not a depositional feature. Deposition takes place when exactly either sand or maybe some type of material, so which can go to boulders, they are going to be deposited over it. Is it going to be sand or the boulders that can be deposited over it? So deposition takes place on, then only a certain type of features will be developed. And the most important of this feature is going to be one is going to be beach, and beaches can be going to be of different type. That is, a, it can be classified in a variety of ways. That's one. Second is a spits, hook, bay, or swam. Or you can want to say mango. 
that is going to be the deposition feature associated with it. Taking it up now. This is how exactly the beach was going to look like. Take a look at the typical beach, how is exactly it going to look like. On the beach, this is going to be completely flat, near to the level of the sea. This is how the typical beach goes on to be looking like. Now, on this beach, you will going to find some amount of water. This is a water that we are going to be calling it by the name of a runner. That is the name that is going to be given to it. That's going to be called by this name, runner. And runnel is there, that is on the beach, you are going to find some amount of water running here. That's a runnel. And then you are going to be having some type of a ridge here. So, it's going to be slightly undulating here. And some depressions go on to get filled with water called by the name of runner. And the whole of the beach is going to be also comprising of some sand dunes. There is a, uh, the sand has got itself accumulated near this place in the form of a dune. That's a part of it that is associated with it. Now, these beaches are going to be of different type and that is how they are going to be classified. Now, on the basis of location, where they are located, they can be bay head, that means located at the head of the bay. They can be, they can be at the head of a lagoon as well, called as lagoonal beach. So, you can go to think of lagoonal beach, barrier island, that means uh, an island uh, which goes on to be acting as a barrier that will go to be having its beaches and at the location of the bay. Shape is, it can be linear, it can be cusp, linear, that means straight. For example, you are going to find a Marina Beach in Chennai being linear in nature. That is a linear beach. Cusp Beach is, a, in India, you can go to find example of Cusp Beach in the form of a Kovalam and a Anjana. We are going to talk about it. That is, a, these are going to be two of these beaches. A linear is Marina, Chittagong, is going to be another one. Cus beach is going to be Anjana. And of course it goes on to be Kovalam. Rocky beaches are those beaches where a lot of rocks are going to be kept. These are going to be called by the name of rocky beaches where a good amount of rocks have been kept in that place. That's one. Shingle is a uh, the boulders which are going to be making the shingle beach in this case. Sand beaches are those beaches where only sand and then the different type of colors of sand as well. Storm beaches are those type of beaches which are going to develop only during a storm. That means during the time of a storm, the sea water leaves a, gives a, a lot of things, it goes on to send a lot of things backward and that goes on to lead to formation of a storm beach. And then from the, on the basis of color, the beaches can go to be black beaches. And you may not have known it, but then some of the beaches can be absolutely black. And of course, some people can go to fantasize these type of beaches. Other is going to be called as golden beaches. Golden, that is, uh, most of these beaches, people are going to say that they have fun and frolic in the golden beaches of India or maybe outside as well. Then you go to pink beaches as well, white beaches as well. So, on the basis of color, also beaches can be of different uh, type. We're we'll just going to show you. The different type of beaches yeah? and uh, of course most of these beaches are going to be depositional form that means uh, it is only when the material is going to get deposited the, the speed of the waves uh, the energy of the waves go on to decrease yeah? and it is only after the speed and energy goes on to decrease that uh, a good amount of uh, deposition starts taking place yeah? beginning with it uh, that is uh, as you can go to find it uh, here, in this case, this is a barrier island. It's an island that has developed for any reason. Now, any beach that goes on to develop on it, let's say here, in this place, in this region, if it goes on to develop on this region, it's going to be called by the name of a barrier beach. This is also one of these places, that is the whole of this area has been enlarged. This, this is a beach. This is going to be another example of a beach that is going to develop, barrier island. So, barrier beach, that is the place it is going to be developing it. All in all, this is uh, the area from where these beaches have developed, but that's going to, could, to be called by the name of barrier beaches. The second one is, uh, as you can go to take a look at it, uh, that is going to be a picture that is actually taken. Uh, you have, uh, you the whole of this region is a barrier island. As you can go to see, that is a uh, inner barrier is going to be one of them. Then uh, this is going to be the entire feature. So on one side, you're going to have a lagoonal margin. On another side, you're going to be having a beach. 
So it's uh, something that is to be seen. Uh, that is, uh, the whole of this region is going to be a barrier island. This is going to be a beach where the waves will be uh, relatively uh, feeble, not very strong. This is one side uh, which can go on to be a lagoon as well, where there will be a beach that will be called as a lagoonal beach. Uh. That's the type of uh, barrier island that has developed in this place uh, and uh, the entire of this stretch can go on to be in the form of the development of a such type of beach. Now, this is going to be an example of a, how uh, cusp beach can go on to look like. This is an example of cusp beach that is a, one of these cusp and It's going to be also a cliffy beach. Uh, it's also going to be one of these examples of a, a good amount of a coarse material is going to be found on the beach in this case. Uh, this is a, again another example of a barrier island uh, and uh, where exactly is it that the beaches can go to develop. In this region, and as you can go to find it, these are the areas where the lagoons will go to develop, and these are the areas there where uh, some other type of beaches and offshore bars will go to develop. This is an example of a black beach. Can go on to imagine it. Uh, there's a mountainous backdrop, uh, and see the color of it. It's going to be completely black. So on the basis of color, which is uh, going to be black in nature as well. And that is, uh, you can go to decide for the color of what color it is going to be. This one as well as this one. The one is going to be golden, this is going to be golden beach. But uh, this place goes on to be called by the name of pink beaches. Uh. Now most of these pink beaches evolve out of corals. Uh, and corals are the ones which are responsible for leading to formation of such type of pink uh, beaches. So beaches all in all can go on to be different types. Uh. One of these beaches that is going to be very, very different is going to be that of a cusp beach. Uh. And that is an example of a cusp beach, one cusp, second cusp, third cusp, and so on, all of these. This is an example of a, what you're going to be calling it. It says storm beach, a rocky beach of sorts. A lot of rocks have been kept. And of course, they have been kept here. Essentially, not exactly someone has kept it. But then that is the nature of it. All of those materials derived and they have formed this part. This is an example of a shingle beach. That is shingle. It's made of shingle material. Shingle that is uh, uh, the entire of it is going to be made of boulders in this case. Uh, and uh, this is going to be a rocky beach. It's made of uh, real rocks of sorts in this case. Uh, so rocky beach, stony beach, we'll go on to classify it uh, in a different manner altogether. Once you want to take a look at it, this is going to be a rocky beach. That's called a shingle. That's a stony beach, storm beach. That is going to be a cusp beach. That is going to be a pink beach. That's going to be golden. Golden beach. That is an example of black beach. That is a barrier beach. That goes to take place as well as a barrier island. And this is going to be, it's going to be cliffy and cusp as well because it has the shape of a cusp in this manner. That is a, one example of a barrier beach, lagoonal beach. That is, a, this is going to be lagoonal. That is going to be a linear beach. This is an example once again of a barrier beach. So, beaches can go on to be of a variety of types. And it is these beaches that go on to, to add so much amount of diversity to the region. Other than beaches. The whole of this area is going to be having yet what we're going to be calling it as a 
as we tell set like that on hook and spit. And they go on to lead to the formation of a lagoon as well. Now understand this part. This is how exactly the movement takes place on the beaches. Eh? That is it. Eh? Just see, this is how exactly the sea waves come out. And eh, the sea waves go on to push the materials here and then the materials go on to keep on coming back. And eh, all in all, that is when you go on to be on the coast, you are going to find that eh, the uh, currents keep on moving from one side to another side, from one side to another side, they keep on moving it. Eh? But all in all, they are going to keep on looking like they happen to be coming towards eh, you. That is the typical movement of, and this is the movement of the sand grains. They come back, they go, pushed, come back, pushed, come back, pushed, come back, pushed. Come back, pushed. This is the way. One sand grain goes on to get a movement no less than something like trillion times. And that will go on to move all the way, if you can go to imagine, all the way from Mumbai or up till Cochin in this case, if it's time goes on to allow it to move in this way. Or maybe from Cochin to Mumbai as well. The other of this feature is going to be called by the name of what we're going to be calling it is spit. See that. Take the take the case of the formation of a spit. Now this is where a spit is. A spit's going to form a near to the mouth of a river, essentially. Because the river goes in to provide them with a good amount of sediment and then the longshore current, the one that we going to went to study last time. They are the ones that are responsible for elongating it in that time. Now, so this is a river that goes on to supply it with a good amount of material eh, and eh, that allows eh, the whole of this type of uh, feature, I mean, material derived from rivers, eh, to get itself extended and it keeps on getting itself extended in one simple direction. Sometimes it may go to close it as well. For example, right now it is going to be closing it, moving towards eh, closing it as well. And it's possible that it may go to close a major portion of the river. Now, in case it, the whole of the river mouth is going to be majorly closed, not partly closed, then that will go on to become a reason for coastal flooding in these areas as well. So, spit is a natural feature that goes on to evolve and develop in this region. As And as you can go to see it, that is keeps on evolving, keeps on developing, keeps on developing, and you keep on taking a look at it, keeps on moving, keeps on moving in this manner. And as you say, there is a it movement can go to be to such an extent that is likely to close it up. Now, when it goes on to be uh, almost in the throes of closing it, it will go on to lead to formation of a lagoon. That is where a lagoon will go on to form. And the sea now will go on to become a uh, that is it will go on to become difficult for the water of the river to drain itself out into the region. So that is going to be called by the name of a spit. And within a spit, there will be some other type of feature that may go to develop in the region. The spits go on to protect the whole of this coastline from a lot of things. That means from tsunamis and from a variety of type of things that they will go on to protect the region. And that was one way in which the spits go on to form. The second way in which they spits when they go on to take a curve. These spits, whenever they go to take a curve, when they go to take a curve, that is when they go to lead to formation of a hook. That is a hook. Now, in both the cases, even if it is that it has led to formation of a hook, supposing this is the way that the hook has developed in this region, what they're going to develop is that will go on to lead to the formation of a lagoon here. So lagoon has developed in this case. Take another example of it, formation of this spit. This is where it is. The bay hole, the whole of this bay has now been, it is getting closed. And this spit is moving forward. As you can go to take a look at it once again. In this case, that is a, that is, a, this is how exactly, this is how this spit is moving, moving, moving. And it has closed this part. Now the bay has been almost completely closed. And a beach that goes to develop on the bay, that is here, will be called by the name of a bay head beach in this case. The bay will be very, very well protected and it will be a very, very good beach to take a bath on because it will be very, very safe beach on the north. So that is going to be split. If it goes on to get curved, then in the process of it being curved, it will be called by the name of a hook. 
that is the name given to it. That is another picture associated with it. That is speed is developing. This is how exactly the longshore current is move, taking place, sand movement is taking place, and this sand movement will go on to cover the whole of the region. Now, if it happens here, then take a look at a different type of topographic picture. I spit one spitter which is a responsible for a complete covering of a, any type of inlet. This is an inlet. This was an inlet in this case. And this inlet has been completely covered. It has been transformed into bay. It is a one that has been completely transformed into bay. That's a tidal inlet. It is going to be called as a bay barrier. That means that this is a bay and there is a barrier that goes on to connect it. That's going to be called as a bay barrier. And that is going to develop itself into a lagoon. This uh, spit goes on to get broken. For example, in this case, uh, this spit has got itself broken into broken into pieces. When it goes on to get broken into pieces, it's going to be called by the name of barrier island in this case. Uh, and if this spit uh, goes on to connect an island, it's going to be called by the name of tired island or tombolo. This island here, as you can go to take a look at it, uh, this island has a uh, been connected. The whole of this island has got itself uh, connected uh, with this spit. And because it has been connected, it is going to be called by the you name know, Tomboro. So you have a bee, you have a spit, uh, you have a bay barrier, uh, and of course, there's some mainland beach in this case, uh, and the barrier islands. Uh, barrier islands going to develop in the barrier that is going to develop by the spit. Uh, this barrier, which is uh, responsible for breaking it into different uh, sections and different parts. Uh, that will go on to be giving you a colored picture associated with it. That's a bay. This is a bay and that is a sand spit in this case. Eh? And uh, sand spit is developing so it will go on to cover the whole of the bay. This bay will be very very safe. There is another spit that is going to be developing here that is going to lead to formation of a lagoon. And there of this spit all around. So it is going to be a bay mouth part. That means that the one uh, a spit that has going to cover the whole of the mouth of the bay that is going to be called by the name of bay mouth part. That's an inlet, and uh, there was a spit, uh, and this spit has got itself broken. That is going to be called by the name of a barrier island, uh, and uh, not only that, but island that has got itself connected to the spit from the mainland is going to be called by the name of tombolo. That's another feature associated with it, and needless to see, this is going to be the beach um, of it, if it happens. That uh, there is a barrier island uh, and there is a barrier beach, there is spit that has covered it, uh, and this spit has covered it from almost every side, every side. Uh, and what it has done is that this is the mainland, uh, this is the mainland, this is an open sea, and uh, the whole of this region has been uh, completely blocked. There are two possibilities in this case. Uh, there is a uh, when this type of feature is going to be taking place, it will go on to turn, it will go on to make the whole of the region a swampy region. It will go on to turn into a salt marsh if it is going to be in temperate region or it can go on to turn itself uh, into a mangrove if it is going to be tropical region. That means that uh, the spits that have taken place, the spits have covered uh, the whole of the region, they have covered the mouth of it uh, and because they have been responsible for covering the mouth of it, uh, what will go on to happen is uh, there is a good amount of uh, seawater that has been trapped here. So, that is how it has happened. That is, a spit has developed, or a bar has developed in this place. There is a sandbar, and uh, all the water that was draining into it, this is where deposition is going to start taking place. This deposition will go on to ultimately evolve itself into a either a salt marsh, or it can go to evolve itself into a mangrove. Now, if it is going to be temperate region, it is going to evolve into the form of a salt marsh. And if it is going to be in a, a tropical region, it is going to be called by the name of mangrove. But essentially, the river's mouth that has been choked, that has been blocked by the spit, by a sandbar, and then all the rivers will start depositing their load here. In the course of depositing their load, they will go to initially going to become a swampy region. And these swamps will go on to be converted later into a mangrove here. That is the type of a feature that you are going to find in all of these areas. Some of those uh, type of uh, beaches uh, and uh, regions can go on to have uh, a variety of type of distinctive features as well. That means uh, they can go on to have a river as well. They can go on to have a uh, beach as well. Now this is uh, an example of uh, a place where you are going to be having a river 
and a beach as well. That's a beach and that is going to be a river as well. It's one of those exceptional type of features that you can go to find it. Uh, it's uh, one of those beaches that you go to find in India that is going to be called by the name of Marwane Beach. It's going to be called by this name. It's one of its kind in the whole of the world. You do not go to find such type of features taking place in the entire of the world. But then, as usual, anything that is going to be exceptional and extraordinary in India, people hardly happen to know about it. And uh, this is going to be one of the features. So, one side you have a sea, and another side you have a river. And uh, uh, there are going to be good number of features that are going to be made out, good number of songs have been made out of it as well. So, it's a real exceptional place. Uh, having a river as well as a sea in both of the both of them at the same place. So no name can be given to it. All in all you can go to say that is it's an exceptional feature. Maybe that it can go to be developing itself in the form of a, a, a different type of a topographic feature later on or maybe a tourist center also later on but who knows it. Naturals all about a marine topography or many landforms or coastal landforms. Thanks for watching this video. Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon for more such updates. Like and share the video and let us know your queries in the comment section below.